Hello, and thanks for joining me, everyone. This is a video that uh, I caught some amazing anomalies beside the moon, guys, on May 27, 2017. Beside the moon, from where I am here in near Montreal, I was seeing an object far enough over the moon to the top left of it. It was very, very far, obviously, so I could see a twinkle, and I said, well, that night there was no there was no star right there in that direction in that area, and I found three or four or two or between two and four objects. It's hard to distinguish how many objects that were there, but these objects that were on the left of the moon is always there's always something there at the beginning of a moon phase, guys. I looked at the hairline moon, I looked at the crescent moon, and I film. I take pictures uh, all around the moon. I, I stick the moon on the right in the bottom of my photo and I get the whole sky on the left and I always catch these asteroids or objects or anomalies. Now what's fascinating me about these uh, objects, celestial objects, is that they are very, very different in color. You can see one is very, very gray and it looks very reflective and there's one that is... Um, almost brown or white color. Just sitting there, gently spiraling. Both together, the four or five objects, and then many objects leaves and one stays. Why? So we have this nose piece. To the left of it, a small blinking light. And there were two lights up at the top behind it. You can see here. Other pieces, whether it be debris, a probe leaving the ship. I, I'm not putting anything past these beings. It's hard to notice these little lights that are on top and going to and from these little asteroids. But it's not impossible to see. And if this is an asteroid, why is it not moving? or it, it, It's locked in place with the moon. If it's not locked in place with the moon, it's locked in place with Earth's gravitational pull. There's something that's attracting them. Th this is what attracts all asteroids, obviously, is the, uh, the gravitational pulls, the gravitational forces of celestial spheres. These, this is why um, celestial unknown objects and pieces, voids, comets, meteors are attracted to these celestial objects. So basically, guys, these objects are right beside the moon. Okay? It looked like one object, but then it turned into just the blue object, or the white object that you see on the left, but the other object on the right sort of uh, went elsewhere. It kept spiraling and turning around, so I was able to get different views, and this view this side here with the geometrical shape on the top there, a, a lit object, just quite intriguing to see this by um, the left side of the moon and far enough away from the moon, but in its vicinity. Because it was spiraling and turning slowly, at times I had the impression that the end was gone. Now, of course, if it was pointing the complete opposite to me, I'd only see the blue part, maybe even in the photo too. But it was odd because it was, it was always changing, it seemed. It seemed the light was always changing. And this is massive. All these pieces somehow are, I think they are all together. They were one piece. It was sort of like a L cylinder shaped piece. Now look at this geometrical shape here, like a platform like area there with other, it looks like a square geometrical shape there. It's or even two of them. No thanks. Techno, if you guys want to see some nice Mars footage, but at the same time get a pretty amazing narration from a pretty cool guy i love his views and i love his cities check out what he finds on planet mars overwhelming now look at 
right here, the objects are aligned. Before it looked like it was offside, but it's not necessarily that it was offside. It's that this object is almost L-shaped and it, it's very, very huge. Here we can see it uh, with a lot of clouds, of course, around. And look at this object in the center, which is absolutely amazing. Look at the size of it, staggering, almost looks like the Titanic, a ship made out of rock, right? The, the, the shape of it. And this white area on the top, it's because asteroids have many, many minerals and many different, um, it went through fusioning and it's all compressed minerals and pockets and mountains of this, they say. But when you look at these objects, the mountainous, um, areas on it. I mean, this isn't small. I don't know what exactly the size uh, it has, but it is not small. And finding these beside the moon is overwhelming to me because I've never found them before. And that's what's most intriguing to me is that the debris field that's coming in beside the moon. Now I have a really, really good one for you guys and it's really been bugging me. I'm going to try to say it quickly. It takes 365 days. The radius of the orbit of Earth is 150 million kilometers, which, of course, the distance to the sun, it takes a year, 365 days, as we know, for Earth to complete one orbit. To fit this into the calendar, we have 365 days for three years, and then 366 days for a leap year. But the sun seems so close, right? This is what everyone says. And because we can feel its warmth and it ripens our tomatoes, everyone thinks it's really close. Okay? Well, I have a problem with that because now they're saying uh, it takes 19 years at 550 miles an hour. That's 885 kilometers an hour. And the Earth is going 1,100 kilometers an hour. The Earth goes around the sun around, guys. It goes past and comes back in an elliptical orbit. Do you understand? But they say that it takes 19 years at 885 kilometers per hour in a spaceship for us to to get there. I'm afraid I just don't have the kind of time and patience. It's not... Uh, I don't understand. How come they say it takes almost 20 years? Does it take us 20 years to go around the sun? We just want to get to it. We don't even want to go around it. We just want to touch base and come back. I've been looking up information, guys, and it's always contradictive on a large scale. And it's really getting to me why people are telling us it takes 20 years to get to the sun, but the earth is going around it every 365 days. Come on. It's ridiculous. So this is what was on the moon, uh, beside the moon, sorry. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, proof again that asteroids and objects can come around uh, in the moon's vicinity. So thanks for viewing. Thanks for stopping by, taking the time to view this video. I love you all, guys. Thanks for contributing, subscribing, and commenting.